Hey everyone, this is David Brown. Today is May 31st, 2025, and this is the final daily update from the Derby Hill Hawk Watch. Today was the final day of the 2025 season here at Derby Hill, but as expected, the weather was poor, so the count was not held. In the early morning, it wasn't too bad. The rain hadn't started yet, and the skies were overcast, and the winds were light. There weren't any unusual birds around or much migration other than these three great blue herons. I went over to the bluff to look out over Lake Ontario, and there was this ominous line of clouds stretching across the sky. I took a screenshot of the weather radar at that moment, and we're down here in this area, and you can see that line cutting the corner of the lake and stretching pretty far. This was the leading line of the strong winds of the cold front. And once the cold front hit, it was misty rain and strong northwest winds, so once that happened, I knew there would be no hawk watch today. I retreated to the shelter of the cottage, but as I was looking out the windows a little bit later, there was a cool moment at the bird feeders with an adult red-headed woodpecker and a male rose-breasted grosbeak visiting at the same time. On my morning hike, I had 36 species, plus the red-headed woodpecker makes it 37. Since the season is now officially over, let me present the results. For each species, there's a graph showing 2014 through 2025, and I'll give the total for 2025 and compare that to the 10-year average. We had three black vultures this season, which was exactly the 10-year average. You can see some years there's not any at all, and other years there's a few. So somewhere in that range of less than 10 is what we expect for black vultures. For turkey vultures, we had 36,111, which was a new season record. The 10-year average is only around 26,000. And over the decades that this count has been run, the turkey vulture number has really greatly increased and will probably continue to increase into the future. For ospreys, we had 472, which is above the 10-year average of 374. And you can see there's some ups and downs, but it's been an increasing trend the past two years. For Golden Eagles, we had 87, which was less than last year's total, but still one of the highest ever and above the 10-year average of 58. It was a good season for sharp-shinned hawks with 4,229, and if you look at the graph, it's really bounced in recent years between around 4,000 in a season all the way down to around 2,000 in a season, but it's been increasing the past couple years. The graph for Cooper's Hawks looks fairly similar. You can see, again, the past couple of years, the numbers have been going up. And this season was the highest out of this span that we're looking at with 368. American Goshawk is a species that has declined greatly over the decades, going from hundreds in a season all the way down to as low as one in a season in 2021. This year, we had six of them, but we really made the most of them. We had a nice adult in the first week of the count, and then we had a really spectacular look at a juvenile that I think that was probably the bird of the season for everyone who was there to experience it. We had a great season for northern harriers with 889, and this is a species that there's sometimes some concerns about their population declines, but it seems like we've had a couple good seasons recently, so hopefully that's a good sign. Bald eagles are a species that have really made a spectacular recovery after their population got extremely low in the 1970s and 80s due to DDT. And this is a species that continues to go up and up and up. We had a record season this year with 1,437. We had a great season for broad-winged hawks with nearly 48,000. And that's the second highest ever for Derby Hill, only behind 2019 when there were over 60,000 counted. We had a high total of red-shouldered hawks with 804, probably mostly due to some really favorable winds in mid-March, which is their peak migration time. Swainson's hawk is a rarity that isn't even seen every year at Derby Hill, and we had one Swainson's hawk this year, which was lower than last year when they had four, but that was a little bit of an anomaly. You can see most years it's either zero or one. Red-tailed hawks ended up slightly below the 10-year average with just over 2,500. Rough-legged hawk is another species that's had a big decline over the decades that used to be common to get hundreds of them in a season. This year we only had 67, which was below the 10-year average of 90. For American kestrels, we had 485, which was above the 10-year average. 
Merlins were also above average with 78 compared to the 10-year average of 58. And Peregrine Falcons were just above average with 25 compared to the average of 23. And looking at the total of all of those species together, we had a season total of 95,401, which was the second highest ever compared to the 10-year average of around 66,000. So it was really a tremendous season. We had a lot of favorable weather at the right times, and the weather really cooperated, and we just ended up with a lot of birds this year. And here's the obligatory end-of-season selfie with the totals board. And you may be wondering what now that the hawk watch season is over. And the first thing I would say is that bird migration is not over just because we've reached June. Some people give up birding at the end of May, but there's still birds migrating, including a lot of warblers, especially the females and the immatures. And you can still get pretty good hawk flights when the winds are right. There are still a lot of bald eagles and broad-winged hawks and turkey vultures on the move. So if we get some southerly winds in this next week or two, you can still get days with over a thousand migrating raptors. So keep birding. Don't give up just because the official count season is over. As for my plans, I'll be around a few more days working on the final report. Then I'll be home in Pennsylvania with my family for a little while and then down to the University of Delaware for my summer job. And then in the fall, I'll be the counter at the Ashland Hawk Watch in Delaware. And now the question everyone wants to know, am I coming back again next spring? I would say we'll see what's going on in six months when I have to make that decision, but I had a lot of fun here this spring, and I think another season would be a lot of fun as well. So maybe I'll be back again next year. Good Lord willing and the crick don't rise. Some people ask me if at the end of the season I feel sad that it's ending or if I'm relieved that it's finally over. And I would say that I can let the season end with no regrets. I feel like I put as much effort as I could towards the season getting up early, birding long hours, trying to document everything as thoroughly as possible, photographing birds, doing the social media posts, and making these YouTube videos. So not just me, a whole team of people put a lot of effort towards this to make it what it is. And with that, I want to say thank you to the Onondaga Audubon Society and especially Dave Fitch. I want to say thank you to all of the volunteers and visitors who make Derby Hill such a special place. And there's too many people to name, but you all know who you are and everyone really contributes in their own little way. And finally, I'd like to say thank you to you, the viewer of these YouTube videos, for coming along on this amazing journey. So good birding, and I'll see you next time. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.